In this screencast, I want to continue our discussion of recurrence relations. Uh, first thing, I want to make a slightly more formal definition of what a recurrence relation is, and then look at three very important examples. So, a recurrence relation is an equation that defines the term of a sequence, say a sub n, by a function of previous terms of the sequence, a n, a n minus 1, etc. And the most the important examples I want to look at in this screencast are the arithmetic progression, that is where you add a fixed number it, to each successive term, so it goes up by d um, in each term. The geometric progression, where we multiply by a factor to go from n minus 1 to n. So the power of the factor that we're multiplying by is going to go up by 1 in each term. And then finally, the Fibonacci sequence, which will depend on more than one term back in the sequence. So let's take a closer look at the arithmetic progression. We'll let the zeroth term of the progression be a. The first term will be a plus d, second term a plus 2d, third term a plus 3d. And here's some simple examples. If we let a equal 5, d equals 3, then the sequence is going to look like 5, 8, 11, 14. In this second example, we'll let d be 5, so it'll go up by 5 each time, 7, 12, 17, 22. And then finally, we'll look at the relatively strange case where we might have d be 0, and then the sequence is just a set of constant terms. So we could define the general arithmetic progression generally by using variables in the equation, and so a n would be equal to a n minus 1 plus d for n greater than 0. And we'd start at a 0 equals 1. So notice, we're going back 1 to define the next term, and we need one initial condition, basically, to get the sequence started. And then we're able to define all the other succeeding terms in the sequence. The next example is the geometric progression. It starts out with a0 equal to a, and then a times r, a times r squared, which is just r times ar, and then a times r cubed, which is just r times ar squared, etc. So it's going up by a factor of r in each term. And here's some simple examples. If we let a be 5 and r be 3, then 5, 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times 15 is 45, 3 times 45 is 135. There's no reason that r needs to be greater than 1. Um, and in that case, we notice instead of going up, the sequence decreases. And if r is the 1 half, it would go 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. We can even let r be a negative number, in which case the sequence will bounce back and forth between a positive and a negative, a positive and a negative. So again, the general geometric progression would be defined as a n equals r times a n minus 1 for all n greater than 0, and we need a starting point, a 0 equals 1. So again, we need one initial condition because we're going back one step in the sequence in our definition. This is called, when we have this situation, we call this a first order recurrence relation. And this is an important concept to remember, and we'll come back to it again and again in the course. So the final example I want to look at is the Fibonacci sequence. Here, we're going to have a0 equals 0, a1 equals 1, so we're going to define the first ter two terms of the sequence, and you'll see why. And then we get the following sequence. So how does this work? The way this works is pretty simple. All you do is take the previous two terms and add them together to get the next term. So Here's a2 right here, and to get this, we're just going to take a0 plus a1, and we get 1. And to get this term, the third term in the sequence, we take a1, which is 1, plus a2, which is 1, to get 2. So you can see, just go back and add these two together, you get 3. Add these two together, 2 and 3, to get 5. 3 and 5 together to get 8, etc. 
Fibonacci sequence comes up lots of different places, and I'll talk about it more in later screencasts in, in class. So the general recursive definition of this looks like that the nth term in the sequence is just the sum of the n minus first term plus the n minus second term for n bigger than 1. So again, we're going to need two terms to get started because we have to be able to go back two places in order to define the nth term of the sequence. So what characterizes the general Fibonacci sequence is the recurrence relation. Uh, you can use different starting values. For example, here I used 4 and 9, and again, you just apply the recurrence relation to so you take the last two terms in the sequence to get the next term in the sequence. This is called a second-order recurrence relation because you need to go back two steps. And again, this is an impor important terminology that we'll use because in terms of coming up with functions that describe the sequences generated by recurrence relations, how you do that is going to depend on the order of the recurrence relation. So this slide shows a couple of questions just to make sure that reinforce what we've been talking about. So take a few minutes, pause the tape or the video, and try to come up with the answers to these questions. So, which of these recurrence relations are first order relation, recurrence relations and which are second order? Again, the way you determine this is you just look back and see how many steps back you need to go in the sequence in order to be able to compute the nth term. So here, we only need to go back to n minus 1, so this is going to be a first order recurrence relation. Again, here, even though it's more complicated, it's got a squared term. Um, and a multiplication. Again, we're only going back one step, so again, it's first order. In this, in the third example here, a n is equal to 5 times a sub n minus 2 plus 1, we're going back two steps. So even though there's only one term, we need to go back two steps. So this is a second order recurrence relation. All right, looking at this next set, of questions. Basically this is just an exercise to make sure that you know how to calculate succeeding terms in a recurrence relation when its formula is specified. So this first one we're adding 3 at each step. So this is an arithmetic progression and if you calculate this out you'll see that it's going to be 23 will be the sixth term. This is a geomet the second Example is a geometric expression. We're going to multiply by 2 each time. If you multiply this out and carry out the calculations to get to the sixth term again, you'll get 320. So check your work and make sure that you got that and understand what's going on if you didn't. And then this next one is a second order equation. 2 times the previous term minus the term that's two steps back. And this actually, even though the formula looks pretty complex, generates a very simple sequence. Uh, A0 is 1, A1 is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 is the sixth term. So hopefully you got all those right. If not, uh, go back and review the tape and make sure that you understand what's going on.